Okay, I followed all the rules for this review. One, I did not open until after Christmas, and two, I waited longer than even the titles of these songs to make sure that I at least dropped this in the appropriate year so I could call this a 15th anniversary throwback. Welcome to 2020, my friends. Champagne for all of you. Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John, and it's time for Throwback Week to continue rolling on with a review of the sophomore album by Fall Out Boy, a pop-punk band at least at that time, with some emo tendencies, especially lyrically. This is from Under the Cork Tree. Rewind your mind to 2005, the year I fell in love with music and, of course, the year of release for this album. Sugar We're Going Down was tearing up the airwaves, as were some of the follow-up hits like Dance Dance or Sixteen Candles. Sugar was my cherry popper, though. You never forget your first time hearing a song that, more or less, not to be dramatic, changed your life. And my buddy Cody threw this on when I mentioned that I was starting to get into some bands for the first time, and my teenage mind was blown. Fall Out Boy's legacy owes a lot to Cork Tree, which was anything but a sophomore slump. More of a triumphant, albeit depressed, victory lap that proved that signing to a major label didn't have to be some sort of sellout move. They doubled down on all of the dynamics that were working perfectly on the already excellent Take This to Your Grave, focusing more on some extremely personal struggles this time around while retaining a fist-pumping, head-banging, riot inducing pop punk sound that still shines as one of the greatest albums the genre has to offer. Legendary doesn't even begin to do this record justice. There's a lot to discuss and take in, but I love it just as much as I did in 2005, if not more at this point, since I actually understand the lyrics now. Well, uh, most of them, that is. Buckle up for pop culture tongue-in-cheek references out the wazoo from the titles to the lyrics you'll have to read over about a hundred times to make sure you're actually singing back the right words. Bassist Pete Wentz wrote almost all of the lyrics for Fall Out Boy, especially back in those golden days, but holy hell, this man's life was turmoil. An attempted suicide in early 2005 led to much of the narration that we hear on Cork Tree, with anxiety, self-medicating, and severe depression that isn't alleviated really by anything you try to do, being some of the main themes we circle. The weight of fame was something Wentz wore like a lead coat in a sub-zero ocean. He struggled to keep his head above water because with the celebrity status came booze, pills, hollow love, and even music ultimately leading to his misery. For as bright as some of the insanely good lead guitars, driving bass notes, or even track tempos might make you feel, this album is dark, 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 and instead of heading closer to the light as the album wraps up, it feels like we've lost the band into a veil of darkness on the other side of the tunnel. Years went by before I really paid too much attention to the lyrics, I don't know why, so while those are an extremely important aspect of the record, I have to spend some time praising the sound and why it works so well. There's literally not a single second here that feels useless or throwaway. Joe Troman blessed us with a stellar range of emotion that he was able to yank out of his guitar performances. Dark Alley showed us his skill at restraint and being able to blend for what the mood of the song called for, and elsewhere, he played some of the most iconic riffs of all time on Sugar We're Going Down. Like, come on, you're lying to me if you say you don't air guitar along every single time. Andy Hurley further established himself as a fantastic force within Camp Fall Out Boy 2, driving home some slamming, unforgettable beats on Nobody Puts Baby in the Corner, Dance Dance, of course, and so many more. Andy is the quiet musketeer here, but his lack of words is made up for in the way that he speaks through that drum kit. Patrick Stump is also worthy of unbelievable amounts of praise too, not only for the way that he brought Pete's lyrics to life in a super convincing way, but also for his sheer vocal talent that just flies up and down the scales, belting out some remarkable hooks or some of his trademark restraint. Whatever he's doing, it's working and impacting on a spiritual level. Suffice it to say, they banged out a well-rounded, confidently produced, thanks Neil Avron, modern classic, but champion to seem that many had attempted to write off entirely up until that point. Pete Wentz could have literally been featured in the dictionary next to the tortured artist at this point in his life, especially with that emo fringe on his forever sad scowl that stood out in the most badass way imaginable back then. Everyone wanted to be him, except for him. I'm only bringing all of this up because I think Pete deserves more credit for just how intelligently layered his lyrics were. He was way ahead of his time, especially in that music scene, writing songs that probably should have come with detailed notes from the artist breaking them all down in detail. From Under the Cork Tree is a thrill ride that never allows itself to slow down and get comfortable. That's actually a huge reason why it's held up so well, because it doesn't get cocky and say, we've made enough great songs for one album, let's just put this on cruise control for a few. That doesn't fucking ever happen. 
ever. Guitars galore, vocal harmonies, an incredible rhythm section that actually recalls the days of when Fall Out Boy's bass was something to rave about, screams from Pete to boot, this is quintessential music from an extremely talented band in their prime. From the borderline comical nihilism of Seven Minutes in Heaven to the unmistakable looming baseline of Dance Dance that's up there with the greatest of all time, this sophomore outing really doesn't stop throttling fans with killer music from top to bottom. And like I mentioned, there's a surprising amount of variety even though all of the tracks feel pretty connected overall. Nobody Puts Baby in the Corner gives a nod to the film Dirty Dancing with its title before conjuring up one of the catchiest hooks of Fall Out Boy's career. It's rather simple, but Patrick's quick delivery and Joe's melodic lead guitar that changes patterns as the chorus rolls on really makes this song a force to be reckoned with. Fame is tackled head-on with champagne from my real friends, real pain from my sham friends. I mean, with a title like that, you get it, right? Fake friends, clout chasers as they call them now, just people who would do anything to get a foot in the door for those stars and stories. This is such an underrated moment in their discography. The suave rhythm section kills, especially the bass and that bridge and the kicking drums that rally up for that final chorus that you can't help but belt out at the top of your lungs. There's an out of this world perfect transition from champagne to I slept with someone in Fall Out Boy and all I got was this stupid song written about me. God, they should really give me an award or something for getting all these song names right. Where was I? Perfect transition. Yeah, wow, they nailed a tight, dark momentum to open this up before covering it up, if you catch my drift. The gang vocal shouts are like lightning strikes from above, all around yet another effective tune that leans into a slightly heavier sound I can't help but adore. Another glowing key this album holds is its incredibly fun pacing that never lets the listeners ear drift, and of course that starts with the rollicking treat, our lawyers made us change the name of this song so we wouldn't get sued. I mean, how are you gonna deny Patrick Stump here? His soulful voice is explosive, but also pretty understated on that bridge, but when they break back in with the gang vocals with only liars, it's game over. Back at it again, immediately after that, the boys tear it up with the party cut of all the gin joints in all the world. The way the lyrics were written is a thing of beauty. I mean, everything rolls off the tongue like poetry, and the chorus that staples together the phrase, the way your makeup stains my pillowcase, it's always in the back of your head. It's genius. There's so many one-liners that stand out on this track, I could spend the rest of the review quoting it. Instead, I'll leave you with, turn up the lights and turn off the shyness. Gotta give some major kudos to the 90 characters in the title gym, Get Busy Living or Get Busy Dying, for the power play it made by changing the pace ever so slightly. Culling suspense winds you into the feeling of the verses. There's definitely some outside influences here, particularly in the pre-chorus and Patrick's vocals. The guitar tone shifted for Get Busy, and I love the inflection each member really puts on their instrument of choice. Even the drumming here really jumps out to me because of how well it fits the mood. I know this hurts, it was meant to, plus it's mind over you don't matter are two stupid good, super well written lines. I mean, imagine being hit with a sick burn like that from Pete Wentz in 2005. I know my emo soul would have been crushed. XO closes out Cork Tree in angst-ridden fashion as one would expect, crashing the metaphorical or maybe not so metaphorical car into the bridge as the narrator tries to cleanse his conscience of all the sins stacking up around him. There's something almost romantic about the hopelessness. XO just has this way about it as it dances around the tragedy with towering vocals and stern but remarkable guitar cadences that I'm still head over heels for. It's one of the greatest songs in the discography, and in the context of this perfect album, that's saying something. Saving some of the best songs for last, let's quickly talk about the three life-affirming singles lifted from the album that are without a doubt all classics. A little less 16 candles, a little more touch me, never fails to put a smile on my face as my mind drifts back to my first moments with this song at age 13. But now as an adult, I treasure it even more because of how completely engrossing it is without ever pandering to their certainly young at that time audience they were reaching. I honestly feel blessed for growing up with some of these bands that were accenting deeper subject matter with some hella big words that teenage John from ARTV had to break out a dictionary to understand. That wasn't the only song that had me driving to the local library to print out the lyrics to memorize. Sugar We're Going Down was indeed my first love with Fall Out Boy, and it's still one of my favorite songs of all time. A loaded god complex, cock it and pull it, startled me back then with just how powerful the line was. It's still fucking ace, and those guitars are something that you just know within seconds of the track coming on. 
Paired up with the kick-ass drums and the lyrics that embrace the weird side of love, Sugar is a clear winner for one of the greatest compositions of the 21st century. That leaves only Dance Dance to discuss, and in case I haven't made it clear, Pete's bass is iconic, Patrick's voice is downright sexy as it grows in intensity leading to the pre-chorus, and all the extra little flares added are straight up fucking fire. There's a good reason why Pete and Patrick have both referred to this as their greatest accomplishment, both lyrically and vocally. It's a landmine of a tune that popped off and inspired a whole generation of musicians and fans. It'd be kind of fucked if you didn't like this album. I mean, to each their own, but y'all are crazy if you're sleeping on this one. Personally, From Under the Court Tree is one of the greatest albums I've heard and would certainly land somewhere in my top 100 of all time. Let me know if it's held up for you or if you've just discovered it for the first time in the comments section down below. I know Fall Out Boy are still at it, and I'm happy that Pete got happier, but damn, it's just never even been close to the same in terms of the magic they laid down before the hiatus. Here's to hoping that they wow us again someday, because From Under the Court Tree and the Past is an obvious perfect score for me, a 5 out of 5. Thank you guys so much for watching this throwback review. I hope you've been enjoying Throwbacks Week. If you do, then drop a like on this video. Subscribe for the love of music if you happen to be new to my channel. You can check out more Fall Out Boy videos right here, or check here for another throwback. All of my social media can be found down below, and I'll see you soon for more right here on ARTV. Happy 2020!